Welcome back to the program. Now is where we bring you the headlines <laughs> of the week. So much, as usual, has happened this week. It's Drama. a period. I feel like every time we talk about this, I'm always saying so much has happened because <laughs> it's the political season. It's the peak of the political season. So, so much is happening. Um, first of all, the British Prime Minister made her way to Nigeria. Um. I wish, I hope on the social media trending, you have her dance. <laughs> I got a glimpse of that. Over the one the, in South Africa? The one in South Africa. Yeah. I think she did it again in Kenya. I and was expecting her to dance in Nigeria, but... I don't know what I don't happened. think we have um, a and conducive... We have too many dances here. Shaku, shaku exactly. And, and she had so much to say. She <laughs> described Nigeria as the country with the largest population of the world's poorest people. Exactly. So I think um, coming here was less fun and strictly business. She also yeah. later on signed a treaty on security, defense, and trade uh, between the UK government and, and the Nigerian Nigeria. government. And mm -hmm. of course, during the week, we also saw a, a gale of... Uh, political declarations, presidential yes. declarations, Kwanko also declared to run for president, and Saraki also declared to run. And there was something a little bit contrastive about both declarations. Kwanko also mobilized a very huge crowd, but Saraki declared his own in just a very small uh, uh, gathering at Sheraton Hotel. Yeah, I thought it was quite <laughs> interesting. And also, <laughs> with uh, speaking to Saraki's declaration, uh, when the Senate president had attended the Not Too Young to Run uh, uh, gathering, yeah. where it was a group of young people uh, liaising with political parties, telling them to reduce the cost of nomination, nomination forms, forms yeah. to vie for office, uh, he took advantage of that situation sure. and, um, and announced his And of course, there was a backlash on social huge media, backlash, which uh, we are coming later to yes, discuss on yes, our social media. Yes, media yes. trends so um <laughs> his also his uh, social his um essay media also came out to say that no it, they had no intention Tension to hijack to the any, program yeah, division so within quite, the group yeah it was quite interesting and also during the week uh sokoto state governor and Tambua. presidential aspirant tambo yes. picked up his nomination, nomination form. form yes and yesterday as well atiku picked his nomination form and, and he wept <laughs> And while reading the story, I saw that um, the reason they said he cried was because uh, yeah. young people came together to donate the money to buy the farm, and that really touched him. And uh, mm. how touching! Very touching. <laughs> and there was another one I read that he had wept because he was weeping for the state of the nation. The state of the exactly. nation. Exactly. He couldn't believe that things but had also, deteriorated this back to bad. throw back to 2014. I think uh, President Buari also wept before he picked his form. Maybe it's a precursor for winning an for election. For winning an election. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Definitely. You need to start weeping <laughs> now if you intend to go into politics. <laughs> weeping <laughs> and just through the night, but joy comes in the morning, yes, right? Yes, yes, okay. yes, my brother. So <laughs> lastly, INEC uh, beat down the 2019 election budget to 143 for billion. billion. Uh, about the back and forth between the National Assembly and Exactly. Um, so and I INEC. guess now is really the time to horn in and, you know, bring out all those expenses that they need mm -hmm. to, um, you know, meet before the 2019 before the Election. Election. Because as you remember, in 2015, they had to push back the elections for security reasons, for budgetary reasons. So we're hoping that now that they have this and they're able to beat down the budget and hopefully negotiate with the National Assembly, Assembly and come to, come to a, a compromise, compromise, we wouldn't see a shift in the election. But yeah. And know. still on the elections, of course, uh, the deadline for collection of PVCs was uh, yesterday, 31st of August. Yes, yes. And uh, a lot of Nigerians have been complaining that the time is too short and wondering why INEC is rushing up the process. But um, I wonder if it's due to our poor planning because INEC had shifted the date already by two weeks. So it was mm -hmm. meant to end two weeks ago, ago, but they gave us an extra two, an extra weeks. two weeks. So I think, you know, you can't make everybody happy. They've given mm. us ample time to register, to pick up your P PVC. PVCs. So at this point, I think um, whoever can't access that this year, uh, they have Should to wait, wait for, for the, the next, next four, four years. years. Yeah. Clinic director at Skin 101 Clinics. What we do is provide aesthetic, anti aging, and medical grade skincare services. Um, so I'm an aesthetic doctor practicing aesthetic medicine. Aesthetic medicine is a branch of medicine that enhances and improves appearance using minimally invasive procedures, like what we are doing today. Um, we are doing something called a dermal filler treatment for tear troughs. Um, one of the earlier signs of aging is loss of volume 
just below the eyes. Many people come with that complaint. Probably get four, five, six people a week coming with that complaint. And the dermal fillers, the dermal fillers are a very easy way to treat this problem. As you can see, just a bit of filler. We are filling out that space. It um, improves the general appearance of um, the individual. You look more rested. Um, improves the appearance of the dark circles in the area. And of course, the downtime is very minimal compared to if you were to go the surgical route. Okay? Um, that's it. Baby, oh yeah, make we do Paradise that me and you Baby, one plus one now you Only when you jump at you Baby, oh yeah, make we do Paradise that Welcome back to the weekend show. This is the lifestyle segment and on this segment this morning we'll be discussing cosmetic surgery and cosmetic medicine in Nigeria and across the world. And I have with me in the studio this morning uh, Hilda Ashio Titiloye. She's a cosmetic surgery expert. To my immediate left, Hilda, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> and also to my immediate right, I have Sandra Bennett, a lifestyle uh, expert and also a blogger. Sandra, you're welcome to the weekend show. Thank you for having me. And on my far left, we have Deka. Deka is also a blogger. Welcome to the weekend. Thank you very much. OK, I'll start with uh, Hilda. Um, you're a cosmetic uh, medicine, medicine expert. Mm -hmm. um, recent research has shown an increase in uh, cosmetic uh, medicine uh, 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 requests across the world. And um, it's quite alarming. What do you think is responsible for this? Um, well, body modification, um, Procedures and practices date back to the earliest civilizations. People have been trying to improve and enhance appearance you know, just to make them feel better. Um, the recent surge could um, be attributed to, of course, globalization, um, the Western standards of beauty that have reached us here. People wanting to look a bit like what they see on TV, mm -hmm. social media, uh, mainstream media, mm. celebrities doing these things as well has made them more acceptable. Mm. Um, our earning capacity has increased. Um, those are some of the reasons that have led to the recent surge. In, uh, the uh, there's this impression that um, the, the craze for cosmetic uh, medicine practices or cosmetic surgical practices is a Western thing and um, increasingly it's coming into this part of the world. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, f how fast do you think this is spreading into, into the Nigerian space? Oh wow, it's just like everything else that we borrow from elsewhere, especially in Nigeria, we do everything exceptionally well. So um, it's spreading really, really fast. And the younger generation especially easily influenced by societal um, um, standards of beauty the need to have almost a perfect mm. appearance um, as all those things increase confidence and so it's going to be to continue, to continue increasing, increasing yes. now is there a difference between cosmetic medicine and plastic surgery oh yes there is what's, what's the difference um, Cosmetic medicine uses minimally invasive procedures, short um, procedures that don't require general anesthesia. Downtime is minimal. Um, people can go back to work and their social lives almost immediately. Mm. Um, plastic surgery is more invasive. Most times you need to go into a body cavity, um, might require general anesthesia. Hostel stay might be a bit longer. It's not as quick as cosmetic surgery, um, cosmetic medicine, medicine. sorry. So um, it might not, they can, um, cosmetic medicine does not replace plastic surgery, but can mm. delay the need to have, to have plastic, plastic surgery, surgery. done. Mm. I see. Sometimes they augment each other as well. Interesting, so, very yes. interesting. Now, Sandra, you are a younger person and um, you are a blogger and a lifestyle uh, expert. So what do you think is the reason 
for this craze among especially Nigerian celebrities recently. We're seeing that increasing demand for you know, body modification, plastic surgery and all of that. Why, why do you think this is becoming a trend? I think um, it has to do with the standards set by the Western nations. For example, most of our celebrities are looking up to the Hollywood celebrities and then you have um, the media influencing what people think about um, cosmetic surgeries. You have Vogue telling you um, Tina is better. You have TV telling you Big Eye is better. So all these things like have comes together to influence what our celebrities actually, how they go out to, to look up to foreign celebrities. Mm. So it influences their thoughts on this whole thing. This whole Interesting. Idea. Now, <coughs> and let me come to uh, Deca. Deca, do you think the craze for cosmetic uh, modification or plastic surgery is a thing that is just prevalent among just ladies alone or you think men are also involved in this men are involved but it's more it's women we do it more and me as a mom i'm a mom yeah. and me as a mom it's something i would like to do wow you like to do yes, that I would why like to do it, but not now but it just makes you feel more comfortable it makes you feel more um all your insecurities, you don't have those insecurities anymore. And mm. I think you relate to people more better. For me, yes. Interesting. <laughs> right, so yeah. it, it kind of boosts your self confidence. Yes, yes, it does. Your confidence boosts your self confidence, yes. Wow, that's really that's really interesting. So now to what extent would you go to do anything that has to do with body modification? I don't think I want to do anything that has to do with body. You are fine the way you are. You like the way you are. You're perfect the way you are. Yeah, because I feel um, this whole thing is all about validation. People trying to get validation. They go for surgery all in the pursuit of happiness. But at the end of the day, it's all in the pursuit of validation. Mm. They... Um, they want to get this perfect body. But what you don't understand is there isn't a perfect body. No one is perfect. What makes you imperfect is what is, is a beauty on its own. Every scar, every imperfection shows that it's normal. You don't have to go the extreme to get um, the ideal body that the media is feeding us with. Uh, I'll come back to you, Deka. You, you want to, you want to, you wouldn't mind having a plastic surgery just to do body modification, but yeah. have you considered the risk attached to it? That's the only problem I have. That's the only problem. But what, from what she's saying, it doesn't really mean you're insecure or you're validating or anything. I just feel it's, some, it's a personal thing. If you're comfortable with doing it, I feel like you should do it. It shouldn't be about what someone else is saying. Same. Yes, somebody's definition of beauty. It should be my definition. If I'm okay with it, I think I'll do it. I won't do it because Someone is telling me I'm not, um, I'm feeling insecure. I won't do it because of that. I'll do it because I'm okay with it. So I don't believe, I don't accept what she's saying. <laughs> okay, Hilda, you are, you are a cosmetic <laughs> medicine expert. Um, what, tell us, what are the associated risks with cosmetic uh, medicine, medicine practices? Okay. Um, with cosmetic medicine, the risks are generally less than you would have in plastic, with plastic surgery. Um, you could have bleeding, infection, you know, swelling, following treatments, immediately following treatments, pain in the, the treatment area. Um, uh, in the long term, you could have, there are cases where you have arteries get blocked, um, death of the skin in the, the mm. area you have treated. But what's important is... Is that with cosmetic medicine or it, surgery? Yes, that's okay, with cosmetic, with med cosmetic yeah, yes, medicine. Yes, 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 even oh. with cosmetic medicine. Interesting. Um, what's important is you seek a practitioner that has experience. Um, then you're, with that, your complications are minimized. And then you go to a place where they know how to manage the complications when they do arise. Because complications will arise, you know. Um, no matter how minimal they are, we try to minimize the chances of having them, but we cannot completely eradicate the chances of having them. So they do come, but we manage them and manage them really well with no issues. Interesting. So for instance, um, someone comes to you like Deca now and mm -hmm. says she wants to enhance her look. She mm -hmm. wants to change something about herself. Yes. How would you advise her? What would you tell her? Um, 
what we try to do is ensure that you are not getting this for we we always the, the normal history taking and all that you have a chat with the patients so you can find the reasons why they're trying to do this to some degree um, there are psychological um, imp abnormalities that um, you'll be able to spot um, people that have body dysmorphic disorder no matter what you do, they will just not be satisfied with how they look. Um, people that are trying to get this for the wrong reason, you know, it's not going to get you a new job. <laughs> it might not get you a new boyfriend. Well, you never can tell. You might it's land you a modeling job. <laughs> well, huh? true, true. <laughs> Depending on the industry, yes, we get a lot of people in entertainment, people that have to, whose jobs depend on how they, how look, they look, trying to tweak a little here and there. But there are extremes that we would advise against, you know, try to seek the advice of even we go as far as talking to psychiatrists and all that when we think there is something wrong psychologically with the client. Now, this general, general question to everyone. We've seen videos and images of body parts busted and things like that. It's very scary videos. I don't know if you guys have seen such kind of videos. Yes. And that really gets me worried about people who go to that extent, you know, to do body modification, change certain body parts and all of that. H how, how do you guys feel about this? Deca? Personally, I feel like when you want to do something like that, you should go to professionals. That's the biggest problem. Maybe no, but would. even in the West, where you have very, very you know, yeah. advanced technological means of making these things happen, we see a lot of these things happen. Most of the videos we've seen are from the West. But they're not from professionals. Well, like they're well, not done. I don't think they're done by professionals. I just feel like maybe one lady just has silicone or has something and she just puts it into your body and you feel like it's okay so i feel like you should always go to a professional you should do your mm -hmm. studies like mm -hmm. she said don't just walk into any place or mm -hmm. if i say i did it here it means you must do it here no do your research and all that that's just basically why you yeah. feel. Sa sandra what do you think i think professionals make mistake the case of black china there was a time her butt dropped mm -hmm. and she was seen rushing to the nearest hospital. So I just think <laughs> you don't really have to pay <laughs> to get all this stuff Problems. done, to put yourself out there, to put yourself in a risky situation. Like there are many people who went, most celebrities, they've actually done it, Hollywood celebrities, and you still find out that they still, they still have um, lysis side effects from yeah. this whole thing. For example, we have um, Donatella Versace. Yeah. Look at her face. She has, she's Botox. got a lot of work done. When you see her, you just know that she's so plastic. And mm. then she looks, in fact, it ages you. You look older than you, you should be, you know. So I think um, a lot of this whole um, plastic surgery, people just take it to the extreme. You don't really have to, to do it, you know. Just be natural. There's nothing bad. Nothing okay, natural. I'll come to, there's this popular phenomenon in Nigeria, the Bobrisky phenomenon. <laughs> Which has to do with uh, you don't know about brisky. I do. You know about brisky. <laughs> <I do. laughs> the that phenomenon now I'm is the one I don't know. I'm aware that there's this particular cream, body cream that he's been advertising and marketing. Yes, I really like to talk get, about that. Helps you get lighter skin and a skin lightening. What, mm. what, what's your take on that? That must be the single. Well, in our practice elsewhere, for cosmetic medicine. Um, the the most common procedures are Botox, fillers. Around here, the single most common complaints we get are issues concerning complexion. Mm. Either the person wants to lighten their skin or mm. they have used the lightening creams and the, the creams have given them problems and they want to fix the problems that have arisen from mm. using the creams. Um, the issues, the problems that these bleaching products cause are enormous. Nice much more than the gratification you would get from using them for a couple of years, you know. Um, the side effects from the creams range from th really thin skin, you can see their vessels through the skin. Um, of course, the patchiness, when they take off that makeup, it's not as nice as, you know, it looks on um, TV and in the pictures on Instagram. So you would advise against no, patronizing it's our, this kind yes, of... Yes, uh, yes, we don't... It's, in fact, we're hoping to start some advocacy, you know, some campaign, anything against skin bleaching. It's number one and it ages you so quickly. It damages your skin, ages you. You just can't get away with it, really. Okay, well, I guess that's a fine place to wrap it up on the lifestyle segment. You've heard it, no to bleaching creams. Uh, we've been talking about cosmetic surgery on this segment of the show. I've had Hilda, I've had Deca, and I've had Sandra on uh, 
this segment of the show. Thank you so much, guys, for coming around this thank morning. You. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Stay thank tuned you. and uh, keep watching the weekend show. We'll take a short break now when we return more about the show. Stay tuned.